The universe is infinite. It has no beginning and no end. In both science and religion, creation is often discussed from a perspective of having a set or a specific beginning. In science, we call it the Big Bang. This is the theory that says everything in the universe was compressed to the point of a single, infinitesimally small particle. Something we would perceive as unity and then rapidly exploded and expanded outwards and created everything in the universe. In religion, it is generally called creation when God, or some all-knowing and all-seeing entity, being the only one imbued with such power, created everything, presumably in six days, before taking a well-deserved day off. Let's take a step outside the box for a second and put these two sides of this cosmic coin into a Vesca Pisces. As usual, the two enemies that never got along actually have quite a lot in common. Both say that the universe started with unity and expanded outwards. Both say that light was an important factor in creation as well. If at the beginning of the universe, we were one essence and somehow became everything, then both are saying the same thing, that we came from the same source. But wait a second, how can we make sense out of that statement, the universe is infinite, if we are measuring it from a sense of having a beginning? And that leads us into the topic for today, cycles. And this is what we're going to talk about now, right after the intro. Cycles are everywhere. The way in which we live our lives is made up of cycles. We have both biological cycles and technological cycles. Biological cycles exist naturally as a part of the creation process of life. And technological cycles are cycles that we have created and superimposed over top of these other cycles as a way of measuring and understanding the reality that we are a part of. Time is a perfect example of this. It doesn't really exist on its own. It has no life of its own, it's simply a measurement of some other cycles. So you could think of it as a measuring tool, such as an hour worth of this, or I'll meet you at six. In the past, we might have said it differently. Let's gather again at the second moon cycle. We've actually talked about cycles before, which makes it really easy to go deeper into this. If you need a recap, watch lesson 16, Shift of the Ages. Let's get more into examples of technological cycles. Take, for example, our calendars, seconds, life cycles of video game consoles. Some of them, like our year-long calendar count, is our interpretation of a natural cycle, the Earth spiraling around the sun. Others, like video game consoles, are completely based on our modern world, current technology, the economy, buyer's demand, and what have you. Biological cycles are nature. They happen in relationship to each other and are much more harmonic than the cycles that we've created. They are natural. The tree doesn't think, hmm, is it time to bear fruit yet? I'm just not sure. I, I think I'll hold off because I'm afraid no one's gonna eat the fruit, right? In nature, the tree just doesn't. It knows by its inherent instructions what it's supposed to do. It's by its natural design. Other cycles in nature are like solar and lunar cycles, the four seasons, and bears that hibernate. Notice too, with the information from lesson 16, you could map it like this. There are smaller cycles within the larger cycles. Like our celestial cycle, we find it broken up into the four seasons. And inside that, we have the cycles of the rest of life on Earth, all doing their thing in relationship with each other, which are both influenced by and influence the larger cycle. Sometimes it may not seem like the smaller cycles have no influence on the larger cycle, but just imagine the story of what happened to the Martians on Mars in the human history movie. I'm not saying that this is exactly what happened, but if the actions of the individual beings changed the evolution of the planet that ultimately ended up in the destruction of the planet, well, that would be the smaller cycles influencing the larger cycles. You know, it's just an idea. We also have cycles within our own bodies, such as breath, drinking water or liquids, and eating food. These cycles are a lot harder to map out because we are the ones who decide when we eat, what we eat, and how much we eat. But it actually does create effects on us throughout our days. Once again, those smaller cycles have an effect on our larger day-to-day -day cycles. Interesting, our interactions with the four elements are constantly cycling. Fire, for example, is prana, which is happening all the time, more frequently than breath, drink, and food. You can see how these cycles become more dense and happen less often. You breathe more than you eat. Air is less dense than solid food. And so it stands to reason that a dense cycle has a longer duration. 
As you breathe in, you ride the sine wave up, and as you breathe out, you drop the sine wave back down. As you go about your day, every hour, minute, and second, you are breathing. And if you created a healthy breathing cycle for yourself, then the other cycles you are experiencing, the larger cycles, would become more harmonic naturally. If you change the cycle of your breathing, if you alter it to accommodate technological cycles, such as pollution and obesity, then once again the result is a cycle that is less harmonic with the natural order of things. Some call this dis-ease, the opposite of a natural cycle, which flows with ease. Of course, you can always correct a cycle that is in disease. Sure, it may take some time, but enough steps in the direction of a natural cycle do eventually get you back in the flow. If you start your day in a healthy way, at the start of the morning, then the rest of the day will flow that much more harmoniously. If you wake up with the sun, you ride the wave of the entire day and are more in tune with the day itself. This was a hard one for me to get and put into practice because I always used to love sleeping until noon. If you think about it, there are different things adapted for different parts of the day. Cats can see in the dark, so it makes sense that they're night animals. I have trouble seeing in the dark without superimposing a technological cycle over top of it. So maybe I should be sleeping. What I mean is lights and night goggles. Artificial light is a cycle of electricity, a technological cycle. There are positive and negative swings in the cycles. What I mean when I say positive and negative is the presence of something and the presence of the opposite of that thing. Such as with a magnet, you have a positive end and a negative end. One is pulling and one is pushing. Plus or minus, male and female. A lot of people think that negative means bad and positive means good. And that's not always the case. We're actually gonna to touch on that closer to the end of this video. A better way to look at it is male and female. Positive is male and negative is female. And don't get caught up on that positive is good and negative is bad. Women are wonderful. And in fact, in gender, everyone has both male and female energy, not just one or the other. It is the essence of giving and receiving. The best example I can give you is night and day. It's that simple. When we don't allow the cycles to flow in their natural order, we often create things that feel uncomfortable over and over. Sometimes we call it things we don't want. It's actually a sort of short circuit in the cycle or a loop. The positive looping back on itself or the negative looping back on itself. It's not supposed to be a loop. There needs to be a crossing over of the male and female energy. That's what creates the infinity, the oneness that we've all been feeling and talking about. Now, of course, we've also made the connection before between what we have described as cycles, this form, and the structure of DNA. This is the instruction set for the building blocks that make up our being. As we increase our awareness of these instructions and understanding, we can transcend our 3D perspective of reality and shift into an awareness of the interconnected causality of all of the planes of existence. There's a little trick here though, Understanding and awareness are not necessarily the same thing. Just as the tree does what it does without needing to understand, without a brain, so to speak. Understanding is not required for the instructions to be followed. That simply means that sometimes the brain just gets in the way of the natural flow of the cycles, the natural knowing that comes through your heart. On that topic, I have something important to share. There's a lot of people who like to talk about life from this new age perspective that everything is just love and light all the time and that if we just think happily, even when things aren't going very well, we'll be fine. In fact, I realize how I might have even propagated that idea in earlier lessons and flat out said it. Now, this idea isn't wrong. It is, however, only half of the equation, half of the cycle. And if you recall, without the other half of the cycle, we have a loop. Think of it like a flowing river. If you cut off the flow, such as with a dam, it kills everything on one side by stopping the flow and everything dies of dehydration and the other side becomes drowned in a loop which gets bigger and bigger until eventually it must break. And so, yes, we should strive to create a life for ourselves and each other that is filled with love, joy, and excitement. But when things aren't going very well, recognize if it's a part of the natural flow or if somewhere along the way you got caught in the loop. If we lie to ourselves and pretend that the loop is the flow, even when it's not, it limits our ability to create a real transmutation of it and create something new in its place going with the flow. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let me say it in a different way just to make sure because this is incredibly important. Sometimes things go well and sometimes things go poorly. It's not always your fault, but you are always a factor in the cause and influence in the cycle. If you can account for the cycle, meaning take account of it, be aware of it, 
you can choose to actively respond or be responsible and have an able response to it. That's what being a creator is all about. I know I just said positive and negative are not good and bad. In this example, I'm going to use good and bad in place of positive and negative. By good and bad, I mean things that feel really good and things we do want and things that feel really bad and things we don't want. Just go with it. I know it might be a little confusing. Sometimes things feel really good and you're on the top of the wave. In this space, it's easy to ride the wave and feel good and be a creator. When you're on the bottom of the wave, if things are not excellent, sometimes it just feels easier to go to that fourth dimensional space and say, everything is perfect and in divine order. This is true from a 4D perspective. It is perfect and in divine order because it exists and is in this moment. And as it's manifesting in 3D, it is not excellent. It could be excellent, but it takes time, effort, and focused energy to transmute and change it into something that is excellent. What we need to practice is taking that positive flowing energy and instead of looping itself back on itself, is flow with it through the negative energy in order to create a transmutation into what's next. When we say that things are perfect and in divine order and ignore the loops or even create them as a justification to dam up the river of good feelings, we actually inhibit the flow that leads to the next. That limits our ability to take action and ultimately what we're left with is a poo sandwich. Here's the analogy. Say I'm making you a delicious sandwich and you've got bread, tomatoes, avocado, chives, maybe some peppers and a roasted portobello mushroom. That is an excellent sandwich, right? Now, say I just put a big dollop of poo right on the top. Do you still want it? Can anyone honestly say that they would still want this sandwich? It's perfect and in divine order, right? Right, but it's certainly not excellent. And I don't care how delicious the other ingredients are. If there's poo on this sandwich, it's a poo sandwich. It doesn't matter how fresh the rest of the sandwich is, or even how fresh the poo is. It's not something we want to eat. The moral of this story is that if there's poop on your sandwich, if there's something in your life that is perfect but not excellent, don't just sit there and let it be. Find out what it is, why it is the way it is, and then take some actions to turn it into something you actually truly want. In that process, in that alchemy, we can really create some powerful change on this planet. If everyone could come from that space, we would see a new earth overnight. Because no matter how you slice it, McDonald's, landfills, oil rigs, and this entire way of life we've made for ourselves just doesn't work. And I think I can speak for all of us when I say that it could be something different, something magical, and more in harmony with ourselves and the world around us. Waste-free, flying vehicles, spirit centers, cloud cities, interstellar travel, and the infinity of possibilities that come along with it. It's all in the cycles. Okay, grand finale. To answer that big question from the beginning, how does the infinite universe have a beginning? I have a feeling you might already know. It's a cycle. And no, I don't know exactly what it looks like specifically, but I can share with you some ideas about it. Every cycle comes to an end and then begins a new cycle. Or maybe it's the old one, continuing on again. Some theories about the universe say that once it was a hugely expanded thing and it contracted to a small point, a space of unity, and then rapidly expanded outwards again. And today, while we can't see the remnants of the previous universe, at least not yet, we can see the beginning of this cycle that we are a part of. It's really interesting. If the universe is infinite, how is it that we are existing in a finite space? And is the goal of life to take what is finite and merge it with the infinite to create a new way of life and a new understanding of ourselves? See you next time.